Good morning. Today is Wednesday, the 1st of September, and our opening sentence is from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with the song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Today our appointed psalm is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I can lack nothing. He shall feed me in green pastures, and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. He shall refresh my soul, and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You shall prepare a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel, beginning with the nineteenth chapter, the first verse. It was told Joab, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard that day, the king is grieving for his son. And the people stole into the city that day as people steal in who are ashamed when they flee in battle. The king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab came into the house of the king and said, You have today covered with shame the faces of all your servants, who have this day saved your life, and the lives of your sons and your daughters, and the lives of your wives and your concubines, because you love those who hate you and hate those who love you. For you have made it clear today that commanders and servants are nothing to you. For today I know that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead today, then you would be pleased. Now therefore arise, go out, and speak kindly to your servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you do not go, not a man will stay with you this night. And this will be worse for you than all the evil that has come upon you from your youth until now. 
Then the king arose, and took his seat in the gate. And the people were told, Behold, the king is sitting in the gate. And all the people came before the king. Now Israel had fled, fled every man to his own house. And all the peoples were arguing throughout the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies, and saved us from the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled out of the land from Absalom. But Absalom, who we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? And King David sent his messengers to Zadok and to Abathar the priest. Say to the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring the king back to his house, when the word of all Israel has come to the king? You are my brothers, and you are my bone and my flesh. Why then should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, Are you not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if you are not commander of my army from now on in place of Joab. And he swayed the hearts of the men of Judah as one man, so that they sent word to the king, Return both you and all your servants. So the king came back to the Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to meet the king and to bring the king over the Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gera the Benjamite, from Bahurim, hurried to come down with the men of Judah to meet the king. And with him were a thousand men from Benjamin and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, with his fifteen sons and his twenty servants rushed down to the Jordan before the king, and they crossed the ford to bring over the king's household and to do his pleasure. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was about to cross the Jordan, and said to the king, Let not my lord hold me guilty, or remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. Do not let the king take it to heart. For your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I have come this day, the first of the house of Joseph, to come down to meet my lord the king. And Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? But David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, who you should this day be an adversary to me? Shall any one be put to death in Israel this day? For do I not know that I am this day king over Israel? And the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king gave him his oath. Then Meshubbetheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And he had neither taken care of his feet, nor trimmed his beard, or washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came back in safety. And when he came to Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said to him, Why do you not go with me, Meshibotheth? And he answered, My lord, my king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said to him, I will saddle a donkey for myself, and I may ride on it and go with the king. But your servant is lame. He has slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord the king is like the angel of God. Do therefore what seems good to you. For all my father's house were but men doomed to death before my lord the king, but you set your servant among those who eat at your table. What further right have I then to cry to the king? And the king said to him, Why speak any more of your affairs? I have decided you and Zilba shall divide the land. And Mephibosheth said to the king, Oh, let him take it all, since my lord the king has come safely home. Now Barzili the Gideonite, Gideonite had come down from Rogahim, and he went to own with the king to the Jordan to escort him over the Jordan. Basili was a very aged man, eighty years old, and he had provided the king with food when he stayed at Manaheim, and he was a very wealthy man. And the king said to Basili, Come over with me, and I will provide for you with me in Jerusalem. But Basili said to the king, How many years have I still to live, and what should I go up for the king to Jerusalem? I am this day eighty years old. Can I discern what is pleasant and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats or what he drinks? Can I still listen to the voice of singing men or singing women? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant would go a little way over the Jordan with the king. Why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please let your servant return, that I may die in my own city, near the grave of my father and my mother. But here is your servant Shiham. 
Let him go over with my lord the king, and do for him whatever seems good to you. And the king answered, Shechem shall go over with me, and I will do for him whatever seems good to you, and all that you desire of me I will do for you. Then all the people went over the Jordan, and the king went over. And the king kissed Barzilli, and blessed him, and he returned to his own home. The king went on to Gilgal, and Shaman went with him. All the people of Judah, and also half the people of Israel, brought the king on his way. Then all the people of Israel came to the king, and said to the king, Why have our brothers, the men of Judah, stolen you away, and brought the king of his household over the Jordan, and all David's men with him? All the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is our close relative. Why then are you angry over this matter? Have we eaten at all of the king's expense, or have we given any of his gift? Or has he given us any gift? And the king of Israel answer, the, and the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, and in David also we have more than you. Why then do you despise us? Were we not the first to speak of bringing back our king? But the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. Over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, and by night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, beginning with the first chapter, the fifteenth verse. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in all the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him up from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings poured out upon us. Give us ever grateful and thankful hearts to appreciate so much that you have entrusted to our care and given to us out of your love that we have not merited but through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ. And help us to seek to bless others in your name by word and deed and by continuing to share the message of your love to the world through your Son, Jesus Christ. The call to repentance that your kingdom is at hand and that the riches and blessings through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, are open to all who believe and trust in him. Amen. St. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus uh, this portion today of giving thanksgiving and prayer uh, for hearing of their faith and not only their faith in, in but their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love toward all the saints all the fellow believers and he gives us a wonderful teaching about um, <clears throat> you know God the Father of glory giving the spirit of wisdom and revelation to the knowledge of Christ and he talks about the eyes of their hearts being enlightened so that they know what is the hope which they are called and the riches of the glorious inheritance of the saints. And, and he thanks God, if you will, for their faith. And there's a wonderful teaching here, not only about Christ, but about his church. He talks about how God raised Christ from the dead, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but the age to come. You, you see, th those who reject Jesus reject the second person of the Trinity. And that's what's being filled out and explained here in the nature of Je Jesus. is not just any man. He's not just any rabbi. He's the Son of God. He's the second person of the Trinity. And we see Paul teaching about what God has done through Jesus, above, far above all rule and authority, not only in this age, but the age to come, putting all things under his, that is Jesus' feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church. Now here's that wonderful teaching about the church. The church is the body of Christ, and you see that being stated very clearly in verse 22 and 23. The fullness of him who dwells all in all. And so there's a, there's a call to all of us that we need to be a part of the church. Now, I'm talking something much greater than denominations. I'm talking about the universal church. I, I, I'm not making any statements about which particular denomination or the like. My personal belief, for what it's worth, is God uses practically all of the denominations just like a chef would use different flavors to flavor the soup. Uh, there might be salt, pepper, uh, there you might have um, some um, basil, uh, some, um, some other spices and the like, and you might have a variety of soups that you're offering at the table. I think God will use the denominations that are loyal to him and loyal to his son, and seek the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So I'm not really concerned about denominations here. What I'm saying, though, is it's important that each Christian be part of the one apostolic church. Whatever denomination that may play out in, there's still one church, one body, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, as Paul says. And so... The sort of lesson, the challenge for us, beware of the idea that it's me, me, myself, my Bible, and my Jesus. And the statement, I don't need the church. Beware of that thought and that belief. You do need the church. You do need the people of God. You need the body of Christ. You need him as head. 
And so if there's a particular physical church, local, or denomination that's not feeding your soul, then I suggest you do one of two things. You seek to work within the community that God has placed you to improve it. So many people quickly abandon ship and say, well, I'll go elsewhere, and they tend to bring whatever problems they have right there with them. Now, some places are not preaching the gospel, and if they won't change, if they won't respond to a challenge to preach the gospel, then I wouldn't stay there either. But I wouldn't abandon ship so quickly. Remember, part of being the body of Christ is to be serving the body, to use your gifts, your talents, to build up the kingdom and the body. And so if, you know, if there's a lack of something in the church and God has placed that on your heart, perhaps you're the one to fill in the space and to invite others to join you. Most ministries that are successful are not led by a program and not by the head pastor, but they're led by passionate Christians who believe in the cause. And so as a rector, as a, as a minister in a small church, we can't do everything. We don't have enough people with that kind of passion. And it's no, it makes no sense to artificially make that or attempt to. But whatever passions members have, we need to bless those passions if they're passions for Christ and for his kingdom and for building up his body. We don't build up the church just for the church's sake. We build up the church to build up the kingdom of God, to do his work, to do his ministry. So I invite you uh, to reflect on not the, the, to reflect on the danger of that idea of an independent Christian and find yourself interdependent, part of the body of Christ. And quite frankly, you bless the church by being a part of the church. And so the church, you grow, by the way, uh, through the challenges that the church faces. You'll grow in that. I grow in that. But we'll also be blessed by being part of the body. Well, let's continue with a statement of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow after us, that we may continually be given to good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger, and that, guided by your Spirit, we may do what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings, as the Holy Spirit places upon your hearts. Let us pray. Lord, I ask your prayers for those in Louisiana and elsewhere that are suffering from the effects of Hurricane Ida. Without electricity, without potable water, with fuel supply running low, I pray for their safety and protection. And for those uh, linemen, those who are working to restore um, power and the like and for recovery, May people not lose hope, O oh Lord. We pray for those out west who are battling fires. Just overwhelmed, in a sense, Lord, with an abundance of water in one place and a lack thereof and fire burning elsewhere. This is a troubled world. and We pray for your divine protection, O oh Lord. And help us to truly be men and women of good works as our colic of this week is praying to your glory and to the furtherance of the good news of Jesus. Help us to do our part, O Lord. Whatever small portion that we play, may it be gathered together as a former president once said, a thousand lights let us be one of those lights, O Lord, not in our own strength, but reflecting the light of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through us. For building up the body, building up the good news of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please join me now in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
I look forward to worshiping with you tomorrow for our daily morning prayer. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.